Hey, what's going on guys? It's Christian Tech here and today I'm going to talk to you about RetroArch, how to install it and how to do the configuration right. The link to download it will be in the description. So, let's go. Okay, let's begin by explaining you what is RetroArch. RetroArch is something called front-end and a front-end is like a library where you can have a lot of different games of a lot of different systems with a lot of different emulators. Pretty convenient. This software is compatible with a lot of different platforms. Let me show you. Let's go to this web page. Here you can download it. Let me show you the platforms. We have Windows 10, 8, 7, Vista, XP, and this other two, 2000, Mi, 98, SA, 98, 95, Linux, Raspberry Pi, Android, iOS, Apple TV, Mac High Sierra, Mac OS, OS X, Xbox One, EPS Vita, PS2, PS3, PS4, Nintendo Switch, Nintendo Wii U, Nintendo Wii, Nintendo GameCube, I don't know how that works, Nintendo 3DS and 2DS, Steam Link, and Web Browser. I don't know how those two works. So, in this occasion, I'm gonna show you how to install it in Windows 10. Maybe in the future, I will be doing some Linux base and Raspberry Pi, and yeah, Android. So to download it, we have two options. We have the version that you can install it in your computer, or you can download the portable one, the one that you don't have to install. It. To download the installable one, you can choose one of these. This table or the nightly. The nightly usually is the version that comes with new features, but the most stable, which is this one, is the version that has been tested more. So in my case, I prefer to use the portable one. In order to download that one, you have to come here, download one of these. In my case, I have a 64 bits version. Click here, and let's wait for the download to finish. So, once the download finishes, you're gonna have this file. It's compressed, so you need some kind of software to decompress it. In my case, I use WinRAR. You have to make sure one thing, you have to create a folder in a place where you will not move it because if you move it, any configuration that you make is gonna be messed up. So in my case, I prefer to move it here. Right click, extract here. So let's open it. And this is the file that you have to open. The first thing that you will notice is that if you have a controller connected to your computer, the controller will be automatically mapped. Now let's close it. If you want to move later this folder, you will have to delete this file, retroarch.cfg. Once you open RetroArch, this file will be automatically created, so don't worry. Alright, let's go here to Settings, Drivers, Video, and if your computer support it, choose Vulkan, then go back. Now in Video, if you want to use full screen, you can select it here. Going back, now here in Scaling, this option will help you to change, let's say, resolutions and it's very helpful in case you want to use overlays later on. And this option that says by linear filtering will help you to make 2D games look better. Now here in video filter, this gives you a lot of different visual effects. I will be covering this one in another video, so let's go back. And here in input, now here you can map your controllers manually if you want to. 
like for example change of controllers or use your keyboard and so on. So here in hotkeys we have a few interesting ones. For example this one, menu toggle gamepad combo. These combinations of buttons will help you to open the retroarch menu with your controller if you choose one of these. This is another useful option in case you want to use it, which is a slow motion. Another useful one is this. Rewind is pretty helpful in case you want to use the feature when you're playing. Also, this is another useful one, the A service. What exactly does that feature do? Well, let's say you have a Japanese game and you want to translate it, but there's no translation for the game. This option will help you to translate it in-game, kind of. I will be covering this one in another video, let's go back. Now, let's go here in frame throttle. Here, turn on the rewind support. Now if you increase this size right here, which by default is 20, 20 megabytes, you will increase the amount of history that you can rewind. Let's go back. Now let's go here to user interface. Here, for example, you can turn this option on. This will hide all the configuration settings, which is very useful in case you have a child and you don't want your kids to change something in RetroArch. Another thing that you can do here is, for example, let's remove the clock. Let's say you don't want it. First, turn on this option that says Show Advanced Settings. Then go here. Menu item visibility. Then here, turn this off. And like that, it's gone. All right, let's return. Now let's go to user. Here. Here in privacy, you can turn this option on in case you use this chord and you want this chord to show what exactly you are playing. And here in accounts, you can add your Twitch account or YouTube. I don't know how those two works because I haven't tried it yet. But this one, Retro Achievements, I will be covering this one in another video. It's pretty useful, same as the PS4 trophy system or Steam Achievements. Now here in username, you can add a name which will be helpful for you in case you want to use Netplay. Let me add something here. All right, here you can change the language of the whole RetroArch interface in case you want it. All right, now let's go here to main menu, online updater, core downloader. What are the cores? The cores are exactly your emulators. So what we are going to do now is to download the emulators. I'm gonna show you a list of the ones that I recommend, in case you are into one of those. For Game Boy and Game Boy Color, I use Gamba 2, and you will notice this symbol here, click on them to download, showing you that you have downloaded that one. Now, same boy, alright. For the Game Boy Advance, this one, NGBA. Now for the NES, this one, FCM, and Mason. Now for the SNES, this one, BSNES Mercury Balance for accuracy, and SNES 9X, in case you find this one kind of slow. For the N64, we're gonna use two. Parallel and Map and Plus Nets. This one is for accuracy, and you can use mapping in case you find parallel kind of slow. Now for Sega Genesis, Genesis Plus GX. And finally, for PS1, we're gonna use 
the Beetle PSX WH, which gives you a lot of different options, and this one, PCSX Reart. Here you don't have to configure anything, almost nothing. Now let's go back. Now that we have the course, let's import the games. Click here, import, scan directory, where you have your games. In my case, here. Scan this directory, and you're gonna see them here. A new playlist has been created. Let's do that for a few more. Now, now you see that there is nothing here, no thumbnails, no nothing. To fix that, we can use two different ways. Let's go here to main menu, then here, online updater. So we have two options, one of these is by turning on this one, and once you turn that on, let's go back, and by hovering over the games, they will auto-download the arts, such as this one. Alright, so we can do the other way. My menu, online updater, and by clicking here in playlist thumbnails updater, you can select one of the created playlists, for example this one, Super Nintendo, and hitting them will automatically download every art of every single game in that playlist. Alright, once done, let's go back, turn it off, and you can see here that every single game has its art. Now this is a good example. You see that even though you have downloaded most of them, there will be a few games that will now have their art downloaded. You can install the art manually. How you do that? Let's go back, main menu, and here, show desktop menu. Click OK, select your playlist, then search for the game that doesn't have it. In my case, it's Rockman X, this one. Since I don't have it, I'm gonna try to find it. So in order for you to install it, just drag and drop here. And as simple as that, it has been completed. You can close this and return here. Let's search for Rockman X, and you see here, he has the art. And finally, to run a game, click on them, select the core, if have more than one, select your favorite, then click run. That's pretty much it for this video guys, be sure to keep an eye on the channel because I will be covering everything I can related to RetroArch. Hit the like button if you like the video, hit dislike if you dislike it, and if you have any questions, leave me a comment below. So thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.